Hello, I'm J Wall with Print That Thing, and today we're going to be teaching y'all how to make customized rings in Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a very basic 3D modeling software, I would say entry level. So if this is your first time to 3D printing at all, this is a good place to start. It's very easy and very quick. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started, you want to go to tinkercad.com and then just hit sign in in the top right or you can hit sign up if you don't have a, a login. Just need your any email. I'm gonna use print that thing at gmail. I think you have to have the at whatever.com before you go through. Um, then put in your password and we are inside of Tinkercad, kind of. Yes, you can remember me. We are going to hit this little blue button. This is our dashboard where all your designs can be found. And we're gonna create a new design and that will bring us inside of Tinkercad. And this right here, this little blue grid, this is our work plane, as you can see, work plane. And then we have over here in the left corner, our like navigation tool, I guess, with a little house. So you can look around with the arrows, you can click or look up on top or down or below, you know, get around that way. I am on a Mac, I just right click and spin it. I'm just in the habit of doing that. Or you can hold control on your keyboard and click with your left finger, you know, left click while holding control. I'll do the same thing. Uh, you can also hold control and shift and that will pan. So control is turn, control shift is pan. And that will come in handy very often. So let's get started on building your own customized ring or a ring for a friend of yours. And to do that, we have our shapes over here in the right side. So look in the top right corner. There's like a grid, there's a cube. You click on that, that's all your shapes, your basic shapes. Uh, then you have your subtractive uh, shapes, which is like a cube with stripes. And these are negative, so they're gonna subtract geometry. I'll show you in a second. And then you have your letters, which is all the letters of the alphabet. So you can write your name or your favorite whatever. Then you have uh, your numbers, which are numbers, and stars, which are like specialty characters. And you can also import things into Tinkercad using this import tab here at the top. And we'll do that in another lesson. But today we're just going to use the shapes that are inside of Tinkercad. So go to this little cube right here and that's our basic shapes and scroll down until you see these like blue donuts or you can use these orange donuts either ones you want to use uh, and just grab one of them I'm gonna pick the Taurus thick so the big thick donut that's the one I want and so that doesn't really look like it's gonna fit on my finger so what I'm gonna do is measure my finger and you can do that with a ruler or anything um, that tells you how wide your finger is. I'm gonna use these special tools called calipers and they help with 3D printing. I suggest getting some, get them at Walmart or uh, you know Home Depot, Lowe's, and you can just slide this guy and I'm gonna use my pinky finger. So just kind of do it around your knuckle right there. And then you don't want it terribly tight, but you know, just give it a little wiggle room. And then you wanna memorize that number. So mine is, 15, 16, 17, 18, it says 19. So just remember whatever your finger size is or wrist, you could do your wrist if you want. So mine is 19, yours will be whatever size your finger is. So now we go to over here to our tools panel and go to this cube with the stripes on it and these are gonna be our subtractive shapes and this will ultimately represent our finger. So I'm gonna grab this cylinder hole. It looks like a can of soup with stripes on it and drop that down here. So do we say ours was 19, or my finger, sorry, was 19 millimeters. So if I click on this little white dot in the corner, that helps me kind of like, you know, resize this uh, cylinder. So I'm gonna hit undo, go back to where at the beginning. And this is saying it's, if you just kind of hover there, it'll tell you it's 20 by 20, but we need ours to be 19. So what I'm gonna do is hold shift and click and grab one of these corners. And that will keep both of these kind of constrained. And so see how they're both kind of, they're staying in unison as I'm sliding down. So we're gonna to go to 19, which is what the caliper said. And then now we're gonna slide this little cylinder, which represents our finger, and try to just put it right over this blue donut. And it looks like it's not looking good. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the blue donut 
and make it just a little bit bigger than this than this striped cylinder. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the blue donut or the blue torus and then just hold shift and click on this this outer edge and just enlarge it ever so slightly. We'll say we'll say 22. Buckle my shoe. And then now I want to get this my finger or this cylinder with stripes right in the center of it. So I'm going to try and just move it around. And in 3D design, you always want to look around. You always want to be changing your perspective so you can really see, you know, if your all your pieces are where you want them. So it's a good habit to get in the habit of always changing your view. Even if it's like almost every other move, you're constantly just changing your view. So we're going to just put that right in the middle. And see, it's not letting me put it right in the center. It's always a little short. See right here? It's always a little thin on this side and thick on this side, which you can do if you want. Uh, if you want your ring to be kind of odd shaped, that's totally fine. But I'm going to go with the more traditional style. So if you go in the right hand corner down at the bottom, there's this little guy that says snap grid and you can turn it off if it's annoying you or you can, I just put it on point one, and that lets you get a little bit more detailed with your moves and get them right in the center where I want them. That looks pretty good. So now we've got this, this kind of like dark shaded area and that's what's gonna get erased once we put these elements together. So to put the elements together, we can either shift click on both pieces until we have both of our elements selected with a, like a little blue outline or you can just click and drag like a box around it and that'll highlight everything. Or you can hit Command A on a Mac, maybe Control A on a PC, and that will select everything too. And once you have everything selected, you can go in this top right corner and hit Group. And it looks like a little mountain. And once you hit Group, it's gonna delete that ring, or our finger. Our finger has now cut through our donut, leaving this cool like Lord of the Rings type ring shape right so boom you're done you've made a simple ring congratulations you can print it you can send it off to 3d hubs or shapeways or any of those kind of things but i'm going to keep on going so i want to add like uh, some letters and shapes to my ring so to do that i'm going to turn the ring from being flat to 90 degrees and to do that you see these little bitty arrows kind of floating in space there's like kind of just hovering here one's on the floor one's up top one's over here on the side you can grab grab the one, just kind of mess with it until you find the one, and you can turn this ring 90 degrees, and that's what we want. You can see it's kind of like below the work plane here, this little blue grid. So I just hit D on the key, or you can drag, you can use this little black arrow if you like, or you can just hit D on the keyboard. It's all personal preference. You'll find ways that um, you know that you enjoy. Or you can grab the arrow and drag it up. It doesn't really matter. I just like to know that it's on the ground, so I just hit D for drop or drop it up. <laughs> I don't know. That's how I remember it. And now I'm gonna put a J on my ring. So to do that, we're gonna go up to our tools and click on the A, which is gonna take us to our letters. And then just scroll down till you find you know your initial or your friend's initial or your girlfriend's initial, whatever you want. And I'm gonna do a J for J wall and just drag it over here. Boom. Right? And as we can see, it just, anytime we pull something from our tool set, it's gonna just automatically put it on the blue grid. See how it's flat to the grid? But to do a little trick, I'm gonna sh show you how to use the work plane tool. So to get, let's get rid of this J. So just click on it and then hit delete on your keyboard and that will delete it since we don't need it right now. Go to your tool panels up here and there's these little helpers and one of them's called the work plane. So you can click on the work plane and see how my mouse is turned into like this, almost like a planar tracker tracking the surface of this ring. That is what we want. So what you wanna do is find, you know, kind of like this, the angle you want your letter to be. I'm gonna try and get mine just kind of right there on the top and then you can click it. Right. So now, as you can see, this plane, the work, the blue work plane has now turned into a different color and is floating on top of my ring, which is what we want. So now anything that I bring from my toolbar over here is going to be right on top of this new grid. So that, that is exactly what we want. I'm going to drag this J over here 
And as you can see, it is sitting on top of my ring now. And now, that is exactly what we wanted. So hit, you can click back to your helpers on the work plane tool, or you can just hit W on the keyboard, that's what I do. And then just click on the floor somewhere, and then now the grid will go back to the original spot. And our J is right there. I'm gonna do something kind of funky, and uh, maybe turn this J a little bit. And maybe even funkier. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand him up. You know, I'm gonna stand him up like that. And then you can see there's this little black cone shape, and that will lift or drop. You know, just like we said before. So now we've got this funky. Whoa! J shape, just kind of floating here on this ring, which is pretty gnarly. And yeah, do, feel free to do whatever you want. There are no rules in 3D printing except for like, well, there are a few conventions, I'd say. But you know, those are there for testing. So I'm gonna just make this ring really funky. Do something weird. There we go, boom. So now we got this crazy J. You know, if you don't like that, you can always uh, use the little arrows and, you know, lay it down if you want it to be flat. Just always want to make sure that whatever you add to the ring is touching. You always want to look around and make sure that your letters aren't floating above. Because from this view, it looks great. It looks like it's totally there. It's right on top of it, right? Yeah, totally. Not really. It is hovering like a cloud. And that is no good for 3D printing, unless you want two separate pieces. But I want one piece, so I'm gonna just make them barely touch each other. Right there, see how that, that blue line kinda is curving in? That's what we want. So now, this will print all in one piece, and that looks pretty great. And yeah, feel free to go to town. You can, uh, like I said, you can go to the stars, add some hearts or stars or exclamation points or anything you want, or you can import things from Thingiverse or Colts 3D, any, platform that you use and drop it in here and make some funky jewelry or you know some basic rings or bracelets um so yeah that's a super easy way to make a ring i hope you guys learned some tricks and tips um, to print this you want to go up to this top left corner and hit design actually let's rename it first just so it's easier to find there so hit design and go to properties, this fourth option right here, and then just rename it, you know, something you can remember. I'm going to just call it J-Wall ring right there, and you can make it private or public, however you like. And so now we want to 3D print it. We've renamed it. Go back to design, and the fifth option down is download for 3D printing. So we're just going to click that. Hit this first option here, STL. That's the file that can talk to the 3D printer. And that will download down at the bottom. Once that's done, you can just load that into any slicing program or you can send it off to 3D Hubs and have someone in your neighborhood print it or you can do Shapeways or a site like that who can print it for you in metal or um, yeah, do whatever you want with it. So that is the basics of Tinkercad, building a ring or bracelet and uh, hope you guys learned some stuff and we'll go ahead and start 3D printing it. And 15 minutes later, we've got a little ring custom made 19 millimeters hope you guys learned some stuff with the very basics of tinkercad uh feel free to subscribe if you like 3d printing and i'll see you next time peace